Welcome back to Oakhaven. Today was a clear day, no rain in the forecast, so I spent the day walking the property spraying stilt grass. Uh, but during the course of, of looking for stilt grass, I found two blooming orchids that I wanted to share today. So one of them is right down here. Not a very impressive looking orchid, but still an orchid all the same. This is crane fly orchid. So we've seen it in the past, which is why I have one of these, these lime green flags here. Uh, it's, not a, it's not an unusual orchid in, on this property. Um, it, I, it's named crane fly because the flowers kind of look like a crane fly, is my understanding. It's actually it's, um, pollinated by moths. Um, I'll put in more pictures of the, the individual flowers so that you can see those better. But if you look down here at the base, the kind of unusual thing about it is that you notice that there's no leaves. And the reason for that is that it produces a leaf in the fall. It produces one leaf. Dark green leaf has uh, generally purple spots on the, the top of it, and the bottom side of it is like bright magenta purple. Uh, so very distinctive. So it produces that leaf in the fall. It stays there all through the winter, so you can find it early in the spring. You can find that leaf, but no bloom. The, the, the leaf then decomposes so that by the time the flower stalk comes up, like now, the leaf is gone. So this is crane fly orchid. Uh, we will go and we'll talk about uh, the other orchid that we found. So I should have mentioned on the last one, which was crane fly orchid. Uh, most people are familiar with what a crane fly looks like, but they may not know that that's what it's called. Crane flies are the things that look like huge mosquitoes that you sometimes see flying around. And you look and you think, that's going to create quite a mosquito bite, but it's a, actually a completely different, uh, different insect. So that's what a crane fly is. So, but we're, now what we're looking at is a different orchid. This is downy rattlesnake plantain. Downy rattlesnake plantain also has an evergreen leaf, or a leaf that's, uh, that's green in the winter, but it does not uh, disintegrate by the time the, uh, the flowers come on. So the very distinctive leaf, it's got this very bold white center vein and then kind of a, a reticulated venation coming out of there, which looks kind of like, like snake scales. So rattlesnake plantain uh, for two reasons. One, uh, because it looks kind of like uh, maybe a, a snake scale there, uh, but it was also, I guess, used uh, by Native Americans for snake bites. The idea there, uh, is that when a plant looks like something, uh, they used to think that that meant that it was good for healing, whatever that is. That's the, the doctrine of signatures. So the doctrine of signatures says that if something looks like a liver, then it's probably good for liver problems. If something looks like a, a snake skin, then it's probably good for snake bites. That's the idea of the doctrine of signatures. So this is beautiful blooming here. This was a little more showy than the last one with these white flowers on here. I'll try to, to give you some, uh, some blow-ups of that so you can see it better. Rattlesnake plantain, although it's not a plantain, it is definitely an orchid. Plantain goes to the Latin plantago, which means uh, foot, and they, the, uh, the leaf is kind of, I don't know, footprint shaped. Same as a plantain that you find in your yard. It's got a leaf that's similar to that. So thanks for coming out in the woods today with us and uh, sharing these two orchids. It was pretty exciting for me to see them today. I don't often see them in bloom, even though I do see the, the leaves occasionally. So if you, uh, if you like this video, please like it. Uh, we always appreciate people subscribing. Uh, other than that, have a good day and thanks for watching.